The funniest question we can ever get asked is, well, like, what kind of show prep do you guys have? What do you do? How do you get ready for the show? Should I tell them or you want to tell no, them? It's, all, it's your show. It says the Ramon <laughs> Foster show up there. The, the, I log on and DK is like, hey, you ready to go? If you're ready to go, well, let's go. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> and we're live. And all you people owe us money. Frank Rice, you you pushed, so you all right, okay? I saw a 405 on here, DK. Everybody else, guess who wins, DK? House does. Me and that's, you. That's right. Something, something, bell, something, something, bell. Here we go. <laughs> here it is. Now, every once in a while, I pay attention to the intro, and I just did now. And you got the bumblebees on in one of those, the big 73. Yeah. There's some block numbers going on. Block numbers are back. It is. This weekend against the Packers. You know, you guys, we were talking about these 500-yard games that you yeah. blocked for. They were in the bumblebee uniforms, remember? They were in those, yeah. Please. I, I, I know this is the most vapid question you're ever going to get asked here, but was there anything to when you put those on, you thought, man, this feels different. Let's go and do something, you know? Yeah. Yes, it is. Especially the block letters. That's, that's coming from an era, right, DK? That's interesting, yeah. A specific era. That one I felt more, uh, I, I what would you want to call it? I felt like the old days putting that one on, like the old block letters meant, oh, this is this is where it got nasty. This is where it got raw, and we got to represent it in those types of ways too, DK. And, and guys took that upon themselves for whatever reason, the understanding, because Coach T gave a history lesson as to the whys and, you know, what they represented in the championship area and all that type of stuff. And I ain't going to front. I know it's such a college, high school thing to be, oh, jerseys, you need to go out and play. But that type of stuff does get you going, DK. You uh, know, the, the Steelers' motivation for switching – away from the block numbers to the skinny little things Yeah, was that Nike bought the uniform rights to the entire league and Nike wanted to put their imprint on no. everything. Okay. And it was like, why? Who asked you? You know, yeah. I, I mean, we have this weekend, you know, the Green Bay Packers are coming in. Okay. Yeah. Green Bay Packers uniforms changed never. And they have block numbers. Yeah. Okay. And they, yeah. the, and you look at a video uh, or film or whatever you'd want to call it of Bart Starr and Vince Lombardi. The uniforms are the same. And the they Steelers are. are this close to having that. Why is this a special occasion that they're wearing these numbers? They're not tied to Nike anymore. It would have to be contract situation because the only thing I can think of, or, or or maybe just a natural progression of why change it in the first way, right? I'm with you. I love the block numbers. I think that the two jerseys that Pittsburgh should have, if they're going to switch anything out, DK, Block numbers on on the road and at home, okay? Mm -hmm. Those two. And then if you want to do something special, do the color rush. The kids love that, okay? <laughs> do the color rush. Those two get me, DK. But you also, you guys also did well in the color rushes and everything. It was just, it was yeah. almost like somebody, somebody in the locker room stood up at some point and said, whoa, what is <laughs> yeah. this? This and is awesome. It, <laughs> uh, it's the smallest things that get guys going, though, man, but... Um, those jerseys meant a lot uh, in a small micro type of way, right? Because your play got to signify whatever jersey you put on. We need to see an A game out of it. But seeing guys come back, seeing um, what it meant to that era in football, even the Bumblebees. I mean, and, and here's the mindset too, DK. You know this to be true. In that building, history is always pushed out mm -hmm. to the guys that come before you. Everybody's embraced, Right. It's and, in your and, face, actually. And, and <laughs> yeah. something that you guys don't know is even – so somebody said something to uh, not necessarily the front office, but people in power that make these type of decisions. You mm -hmm. know, when people come back and, hey, it's the 10th anniversary of Super Bowl this, and it's the 15th anniversary of Super Bowl. I think the 20-year anniversary is coming up of the old five one uh, okay. real soon too, DK. And somebody spoke to somebody in power in the front office and said, you know, you guys can't continue to do this because at some point people die off or people stop coming back as often in those moments. You need to celebrate everybody. 
Yes. And and if you wore that jersey in, in any kind of capacity during the regular season, you need to be celebrated. It can't just mm-hmm. be the guys that won championships. It can't just be the guys that, you know, have their names up in the rafters and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. that's why going back to different eras, DK, to what we do a throwback, you know what I'm saying? Like it means a little bit more in those moments. And I'm glad I, I play for an organization that understands that too. Mm-hmm. David says he was at Nike at the time, and it's true. Uh, meaning the way I described what Nike did, they just came in and did a total revamp. He also points out I had never wow. heard this that the that the numbers match the font of the numbers that are on the front and the, the back front. of the helmet. Yeah, I don't care. I'm changing <laughs> back, David. <laughs> Call somebody you know. Okay, it never made sense. It took. Something that was so strong. There's a college team somewhere yeah. in the Midwest that wears the Steelers uniforms, the Steelers old uniforms. Is it Iowa? Uh, Iowa. Iowa. Okay. Yeah. It is them. And then I watch, I, I, you know, if I'm walking past like a TV in a bar or something, I look up and I go, whoa, it's the 70s Steelers. And it's, it's, and it's some college. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah, that's crazy. I'll tell you who's going to be the most popular person around holiday season. Hmm. Our man David that worked at Nike. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey Dave. <laughs> you, you still have that Nike discount? I will be calling Dave for that one, man. <laughs> I like that. Somebody else points out here, Big Hurt points out the all white 70s uniforms. Oh, and man. I picture the early days of mean Joe Green. Come on, man. With those all white jerseys that didn't stay all white for very long. <laughs> no, they did not. There was a lot of blood and everything on them, too, I'm sure, right? The boss giddily wow. and that actually is an adverb points out that to become a member you do so at dkps.net slash join and when you join you will be adding to the number 1528 we crossed 1500 yesterday uh, on this show absolutely amazing where we're headed here remember the goal is to get to 2000 by season's end yeah, that and we are on our way, man. Uh, hey, way to tell a friend to go tell a friend, good people. That's all we're saying. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, are we ready to do some uh, some hay moaning here? I'm I'm ready if you are, man. It's hump day. Players back up on the field today, DK. Let's 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 get it rocking. All right. All right, let's do that first. Clarence points out he loves the color rush. Yes, everybody loves too. the color rush. Yeah, and Frank wants everybody rush. to to hit the like button, but do it like you mean it. Don't do one of these half like semi like like be you a, know be a, be a part of this okay like don't half tail do it right dk do it, do it from here you know like from here we can do that we can do that <laughs> let's uh let's uh let's return with the only segment that matters and that's hey moan at dk pittsburgh sports we take pride in coverage that connects our city's fans to their favorite teams now that connection's stronger than ever introducing our all-new state-of-the-art app Find expert inside reporting and original podcasts. Check live box scores. Track the latest stats. Chat it up with our community of thousands of fans, all in one place. The new app from DK Pittsburgh Sports. Coverage that connects. You can never forget that we've always got new people coming in, and meaning new people wow. just, just watching, not necessarily members or whatever else. But Right. Uh, and the reason I say that is, well, come on, watch this for the first time and go, what the heck is a hey moan? That is our way of saying, you ask the 11 years starting NFL guard over here, anything you got. Okay. We yeah. handle almost anything. Believe me, after that salsa sequence yesterday, there, there's nothing that's off limits. Okay. Absolutely not. So all you do is you put a question in over here. And you make sure that you accompany it either with an actual typing out hey moan or use the hey moan emoji if you're a member and it's that much better. You follow yeah. me here? Uh, absolutely. That's way better, DK. So just that's just for those of you who are new who tune in and go, what the heck? What, what am I missing here? What is this? Jay says, DK and moan, what if we limp into the playoffs like that year that the Giants did and won the Super Bowl? <laughs> when they didn't have any type of offense the whole year, but flipped the switch in the playoffs. Moan, you have been part of teams that did flip a switch, though, haven't you? Yeah, 100%, man. The the what if is a huge game to play, Jay Hart, man. 
Uh, and, and it's a beautiful one, too, because all this is about momentum. I'll con consistently say since he was dead in the water until they got hot in the playoffs and started winning. That's how it goes. That's why it's always, hey, let's start this guy and build for the future. It's never a conversation in Pittsburgh. If, if that's something, Jay Hart, that's going to happen, it's got to, and you know where I'm headed, huh? Day, you're right, Stiller. Uh, but, but here's what has to happen, though, too. That group up front has to grow up because I heard that story firsthand of, of that OA group. That group gave up, I think, like 46 to 52 sacks, 56 sacks or something like that on the season. And they just really got to a point. Darnell Stapleton started. You had Justin Hartwig in. I think some somebody got injured that year. Oh, Marvin Smith got injured. Hearts. Max. But, but you know what happened, though? And DK, you wrote this story. You read it and you was around it, too, right? I was that covering it. That group did yep. this. They did. They they came together and you it's know what a else perfect happened? Perfect example. It really it is. Was. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm telling you about this group. Like it has to start with them. Like they were bad and they will probably tell you we sucked. Won't they, DK? <laughs> They'd use worse language than they that. They use worse yes. language. But here's also what happened too. One, you had Ben that could just fling it around. And that, that was the time where he was really just tossing bodies off of him because he had to, right? But he told those group, those yeah. guys, screw it. Just play ball. Give me enough time, and we're going to make this thing happen. Like, he legit, like, screw it. Screw the sacks. Just play ball and just hustle. And that, honestly, to me, is probably the birth of living like rock stars that this group, I'm hoping, picks back up again. Yeah. I, it, th I hadn't really thought of it. One of the things that that team struggled with, uh, especially, you know, as, as they couldn't block. And then and then they just kind of got things together and they communicated and they filled gaps and they realized who needed help. That's something that we don't bring up nearly often enough. And, and, and you and I did in a casual conversation that we had here in the studio last week where you were saying, hey, there's some guys that just need a certain amount of help or a certain yeah. thing that can help them. And that sounds lame, I'm sure, to the layman. But isn't it real, Moan? It is. It, it, yes, it is, DK. No, it, it, it's a gang. It's a pack. It's a group. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's goons. All right. You don't just name one. You name everybody, and that's a part of it. Those dudes understand. Oh, he gonna ride, so I gotta ride too. Like just to give you guys context on how bad those two years were, DK, as far as sacks. Okay, in 07, 47 sacks. 08, Oh man, they did better than that. Well, no, they won less than that. Forty six. That Super Bowl year in 50, 50 sacks given up. I know. <laughs> so How when we speak survive of, that, when we speak about the O line, right, DK, mm -hmm. the numbers do matter. Having been back there mattered more. And making that group grow up and come together during that stretch on top of defense, we cannot deny that. Uh, that's, that's how you start a regime of having dominant OLs, man. My bad on the rent. This is supposed to be, Hey, moans multiple. And I just get going like that. My bad. <laughs> Some business to take care of. Swan comes in with five gift memberships. Uh, hand over fist comes in with five gift memberships. Oh, my bad. My bad. Okay. The, uh, here, I'll put them back up here. And, uh, the barber of course comes in with five gift memberships. We've also got some tens in the group. That would be Bert. That would be fishing for trout. That would be our friend Ryan Lytle. Uh, it's it's uh, it's great to see this. Monongahela Mike also comes in with ten. Uh, if you want to accept these gifts, the way to do that is to make sure that you have accept gifts. Yeah, you do. And right there in the super chat, uh, if you already have one, as we went over yesterday, a membership, you're not going to be able to accept one. So. Right. But, people across from the dreaded uncle's table joe says hey moan with george pickens expressing his frustrations here on reality tv <laughs> what does an oc do the next game how does the offense move forward if he's not you know having a b like drama but but if he's not getting noticed is it you know do you do you even have it in the deepest darkest recesses of your mind if you're matt canada boy i really got to take care of pickens because he complained that's what I'm hoping he doesn't do. Yeah. I'm hoping he doesn't do the most predictable thing is try to force feed George Pickin when it's not there. The game got to come to you sometimes. Deontay has proven to us that he can get open, right? Mm -hmm. I think his getting open skills is a, is a little bit better than George Pickens at the time. It's hard playing ball, man, when you're just throwing up 50-50 balls. Like, a lot of this has to be get open, get in space, and make something happen. 
And, and, and George has acknowledged at the beginning of the season, man, I got to be a guy that gets more yak. Didn't he tell you that, DK? Yeah, is what he has to do. So that, that was means number one for running. him. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's route running. Now I know he wants the ball coming in his direction. That's another story. But to your original question, Matt Canada can't hear that. He can't try to force feed a second year guy when his job needs to be getting better as an offensive coordinator week after week. When his job's on the line. I mean, we've been real about it. I mean, that's that's the part here. Somebody uh, mentions here that, you know, Kenny's here, Bark Z says Kenny's the one who's throwing the ball, not Matt Canada. And that's right. the other part of this that nobody seems to be bringing up this week is that George is getting doubled. Okay. Teams want to take George away. So what George has to process as much as he's not going to want to is listen, your mere existence is opening up space for us out there. Okay. Every route that you run, that merits double coverage. The fact that you're breathing over there opens up something for somebody else, and that has value to the offense. It doesn't get you numbers. It doesn't get you paid or whatever else here. But people around the NFL notice who earns double coverage and who doesn't, and it is going to factor into your contract someday. It is, and I think he's going to be fine if he understands that because when somebody else starts to eat DK, a little bit more food goes on your play. Look what Al Sauce says here. There, there it is. Al Sauce. George is getting doubled without Deontay. Now Deontay's got it. Deontay's not the kind of guy you double, but if Deontay were to p- start putting up games of 10, 12 catches, you're going to start leaning some safeties over there. You're going to start doing wow. some things that that maybe open up some stuff for George. But, you know, you also can – I don't mean to take the pressure off Matt Canada here because if Canada wants to free up George, he can do some of that clever stuff that we saw the 49ers doing – where they're doing these patterns where the receivers go like this so that yeah. they can they can run like those uh wily coyote roadrunner type yeah. picks. <laughs> yep. You know, you yeah, run into a exactly. wall. Uh so, so he can do better too. Yes, he yes, he can. This this ain't just one person as much as we can pile on to Matt Canada to his defense, like you said. George can't make it his point, and Matt Canada can't either. It's, they they have to collectively be in the same space as one another and understand this is this is how it works everybody eats when you win it's that simple tremendous stuff here i don't even know about this bruce says where did he go here he is bruce says hey moan why didn't you tell us that your high school ripley tennessee retired your number 77 where you also were a place kicker and punt returner Bruce, what kind of digging you doing, man? Yeah, they did. Me and my brother, well, man. I don't know. The retired number is one thing. <laughs> I want to hear about the punt returns. You didn't hear about that? Yeah, man. Let's I have well, it. Not, not punt returns. Kickoff, kickoff and field goal. I mean, let me be all the way correct on that. No punt return. I, I, that's one side I've never played. <laughs> right? I'm seeing all these. Mo, what the hell? What? Yes. I, I, the D1 athlete coming out. So here's the thing. Our high school kicker had uh he ended up being a punter at Mississippi State. So he was punting and ended up messing up his hamstring a quad. Same thing that Presley Harvin went through. Okay. So they went to the guy they can trust, a little bit of the guy that they knew was smart enough to do those things. And I became our place kicker and extra point field goal. DK. Yeah, that's part of my story. No, I didn't. Hey, right. <laughs> Bark C says Moan had four four six. <laughs> oh, my my thing never been speed, man. Ever. Uh, it, it's so funny though. The nature of football, yeah, unlike any other sport, <laughs> funnels funnels their best yeah. athletes, regardless of the position where they eventually end up, they do. through the most important spots. At youth levels, they don't think, man, you know, someday that's going to be a left guard in the NFL. They couldn't Never. care less. Never, <laughs> man. They need it, you where the points are coming. You know what What? What would happen? The concession would be, DK? I'd be blocking on the O-line, get into the end zone, run to the sideline, had a kick and shoot, put my kick and shoe on, kick the field goal or kick the extra point, stay on the field, DK, do kickoff, Make sure they get the tackle, run to the sideline, change shoes, and was right back for a defensive uh, series, DK. Demond Brown points out that Kendrell Bell, one time uh, yeah. rookie standout with the Steelers, was our kicker in high school. <laughs> and that's another funny thing about Latrobe, by the way. Everyone <laughs> at some point or other out at St. Vincent College in that kind of goofing off period after practices will, will show off what they think are their field goal skills. Yeah. Uh, oh, no doubt about it. You can't wait to. And they're limited. 
You can't <laughs> listen. Hear me, man. You can't. Well, who is it? Eric Reed is a legitimate kicker right now, yeah. man. Well, he can legitimately kick and has in games too. So, uh, very fascinating, DK. Yeah, you just put your best freaking players in a position you know they can get the job done. That's what that was, man. Crazy. I who see Ron best- Lytle said Ike, uh, Ike Taylor was a high school kicker. Yeah. Who was the best kicker out of your group? It was Marquise, huh? Yeah, that fool could just do anything. He could just do anything. You know, those, are people, that you, those are people that you hate, like in it, a healthy it, it, way. You know yeah, what I'm talking he, about? A kid yeah. on the playground who could do anything. That, yeah, that was him. But he would also let you know fast, <laughs> quick, fast, in a hurry. He quit basketball <laughs> in the middle of a game. Him and his brother quit basketball, man. And I'll tell you this one, too. Speaking of punting and, like, uh, uh, gifts and stuff, if you ever look at those pooch kicks that Ben did, I think we just talked about it. He can – well, he only chose to punt with his left foot. He's a righty, and he kicks it left foot. Weird. Why? Why? I I really don't know. He gets the ball, pooches it. If y'all got time after you get done with this video, he only kicks with his left foot. Mm-hmm. Weird. A couple of uh, straight-up football questions here, business-type things. Uh, Cody asks, don't the Steelers have a roster spot open from the Cole Holcomb injury? Haven't heard of them adding anyone to the 53. Yes, they have, and it's Anthony McFarland. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's obviously, right. That you're not you're not putting McFarland inside linebacker, but you are getting McFarland back into the offense, and that will mean something it will. Sunday. Just because no one's heard his name all season and it, it goes all the way back to training camp when the you know more casual fans aren't paying attention, you will see. You will see McFarland on the field, and you will see him making an impact. Coin asks about Minka playing this week. Uh, you're not thinking about Minka playing. You're thinking right now about Minka practicing. Uh, Mike Tomlin's suggestion is that Minka can get back out there at some point later in the week. Maybe they're buying him a little bit of extra time uh, to heal up. Uh, Jason yeah. asks, hey, Moan, could we see Broderick Jones at left tackle and move Dan Moore to right? Or do you think that'll happen with a full offseason? Coach T gave you an answer, Jay. Um, I'm not sure if you saw, but he was like, it's harder for Bro- uh, I mean, for Dan Moore to play right tackle. It just is. I know you're saying, well, he's supposed to be a pro. I'm with you. But if it's something where you just leave it alone, leave it alone. It's like asking Marquise to play guard. Can he do it? Could he have done it? Yeah. Do you want him doing that, DK? No. <clears throat> you know, and, and another one. Okay, here we're, here's another situation. I know you guys want to push back on this one. The reason I moved to the left, the Castro could really only play right. As his body was weird like that. He will tell you, like, I'm a screwed up body individual. Not that he didn't want, like, it was legitimately weird for him to do it. The same way I would just tap, Dave would tell you, I, I can't do that. Like, it, it's something about me being good at where I'm at. And that's how those situations go. You wouldn't want the cash from moving over to the left side, would you? And you had to do, of course not. And you had to do what you had to do to keep your job. Uh, you know, moving out of Dave's way, basically. Dave comes in as the first round pick. All right, I can do this. Exactly. Um, so but here, Roderick- this is, Fra- Frank brings up the point here. Frank wins it. I mean, 166 yards. What are you changing? <laughs> what are we changing against a decent, de- a decent run defense? Yeah, in and, Tennessee. And here's what we're looking at, too. Can, can y'all, oh God, dog, I hate having this conversation. DK, I'm gonna get in, I'm gonna get out. Do yeah, y'all yeah. really think Dan Moore sucks? Like, if you have him, you have Cole, you have you, you have a center and a guard, okay. And you have that left tackle. We got three of the five. Do y'all really think Dan Moore sucks, or do you just are you just infatuated with Broderick playing left because that's what he played in college? Quick pro tip: Broderick also played right tackle yeah, he in did. college. A year of right tackle. And by the way, there's there's also and, and I understand that left tackles are the ones that get the big money and the big splash and the easier path to the Hall of Fame and all that other stuff. I get it. Protecting the quarterback's blind side is critically important. However, right tackles also get paid, okay? <laughs> right tackles also do well for themselves. Uh, a, a casual check of Chooks Okorafor's bank account will <laughs> confirm this, okay? But you can also say this about the past few right tackles. They do get paid. They do get prioritized. Yes, they do. Uh, and, Mike and that Mc, I was going to Mike McGlinchney, who just signed with Denver, got broke mm-hmm. off as a right tackle. And that's okay, I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with that. You do see teams investing high picks in right tackles. So if 
I think everyone wants to always protect the asset or the value asset of the first round pick. And just once you're in the NFL, you're just a, you're just a player. Stop worrying about retro draft grade evaluations and other stuff. Do you know what I'm saying here? Yeah. If I, if Broderick Jones is your starting right tackle for the next 10 years, that is one hell of a great pick. It is, DK. It is one great. I'm talking about it. Here's the thing, too, that we speak about, right, DK? Uh, you, uh, of the guys that you have on your team, you need three of the five to just be your go-getters. So those three going to end up getting freaking all pro and pro bowls and all the notoriety that comes along with it. Here's what I'm telling you as I'm looking up this roster right now. You ready, DK? Mm -hmm. Best line probably in football. And I had somebody from PFF on my show this morning. He said it's probably Philly. I don't know if it's a probably, but go ahead. <laughs> now, here we go. Now, hear me out. You ready? Which is you how ready? Isaac Salmalo became expendable, by the way, but go ahead. Now, so hear me out. Lane Johnson, we know who he is, right? Solid, mm -hmm. very solid. Right tackle, also one of the highest paid tackles in the entire league. Speaking of right tackle, right, DK? Mm -hmm. You probably couldn't tell me who their, left, their right guard is at all. Sua no. Apeta is his name. Okay. okay. A guy that's playing his role. Now let's go to center. Jason Kelsey. Dog. Nothing else needs to be said, right? No, no, no. They got a cheap guy in Landon Dickerson as a draft pick, and they got Jordan Maialata, a guy who came through a program to become their premier left tackle. You got to build this thing up a little bit, and it ain't going to be perfect in the beginning. If Broderick Jones is the best right tackle for this team, keep him there. Also, we're speaking about guys that grow into role. Maialata grew into that role of being a very good left tackle. I'm okay with watching Dan Moore flourish if we can get him the center, and a right tackle together, and we figured out everything else from there. Brent Haynes has a really, really good question here, and I'm glad somebody brought this up because this is important. He says, hey, Moan, with Kenny Pickett, he says being doubled. He obviously means George Pickens, so I'll, I'll, I'll restart it. With George Pickens being doubled and Deontay Johnson kind of drawing over the top double coverage, who can be – our third wide receiver is Calvin Austin's too small and he gets hurt and Allen Robinson has lost his step. What do you think the Steelers can or should do with the third wide receiver slot? I think Calvin Austin being a slot guy could work. He could. Uh, in spots where you can get Allen Robinson going. And, and, of course, DK, you keep bringing this up all, time after time again. Anthony McFarlane being back means a little bit more than just him playing running back. Correct. Yes, it, I, I, it means I think, all kinds of weird things, actually. And and to uh, who was it early that asked the question about catching a run in the playoffs? Here, here's the thing, though, too. You get Pat back, right? You put Connor uh, Hayward in a role that doesn't necessarily, <clears throat> you know, mean some blocking to where he can make plays sporadically for this team. Calvin Austin's your immediate answer, right? Mm -hmm. But there's other guys that would play that role whenever Pat is back, whenever Connor can play a bigger role. Heck, we got a Darnell Washington catch last game. Oh, wow. I forgot about that. We, we should have invested an entire it. episode in that. We ain't even mentioned it, did we? I agree with you with Calvin about Calvin Austin. And I want to remind everybody, especially those of you who watch the Steelers very closely, don't miss a play, study the film, all 22, all that stuff, of a, a running touchdown that Anthony McFarland had in Atlanta in the preseason. Do you remember it? The one off to the right, 14 Struck yards. Out. Yeah. <clears throat> you know how much ingenuity went into that play? Zero. It was him, and I don't remember who the other running back was, but there were it was a two back set. Okay. Kenny turns around, takes a snap. You have no idea who he's going to give the ball to. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's that's the extent of the deception. Other than that. Ant Mac takes it and runs in a like one of those time warp continuum bending yeah. lines where it's it looks like a straight line, but it's not. He also got a couple of great blocks thrown for him. Remember a big one there by yep. Broderick Jones. Uh, sorry, won't. not Broderick Jones. It was Dan uh, Moore. No, it was on the right side. It was and uh, Gunner. Gunner, yeah. It yeah, was yeah. Gunner who threw the big block there, and he 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 got through. Not so much through it, but just everything was just straight. That was what they coached up Ant Mac to do uh, back in, in training camp was, listen, you were one of the fastest guys in college football when we got you out of Maryland. Yeah. That's all we want you to do. Use that. Stop slowing down. Stop Le'Veon belling it. Just go. Just mm -hmm. go. And to his credit, he did that all through training camp. I'm really – I'm looking forward to seeing him on the field. Yeah. Yeah. Did I put that up there? You put that up there, DK. 
<laughs> Maybe DK will too. <laughs> I, I got one I want to address real quick. And it's pretty legit. It's pretty cool. Uh, Alex goes, hey, Mo. Well, J.J. Watt saying he missed playing being, while being at the facility. Do you miss it time you go to the Steelers facility? No, I miss the camaraderie. Uh, J.J. missing mm-hmm. it is simply just be this, man. Uh, that night and the next night, that'll probably be it, and then it's over with. J.J. is a, a freaking walking gold jacket. A scenario that could happen is a stretch, D.K., right? Him playing with T.J., it's forever going to be a conversation as much as he's in Pittsburgh. But get used to seeing J.J. Watt, though, man. It's it is what it is. You could see he, him as being one of those guys who just has a hard time staying away from the action. From the action, uh, Howie Long. Yeah, How- it's just you just you just see J. I see JJ as just one of those people who just he's not going to be sitting on su- sitting somewhere fishing in you know some quiet lake in Oklahoma nah. or whatever you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm with Rich Dallas, man. Love seeing him be a fan. I, I am too. I, I, I enjoy watching him be a fan of his little brother, man. That's some cool stuff. That's as far as I really want to take it. Signing him to a half a year deal so that he can play again. That's see anything's possible, but I kind of doubt it. Rick McFarland brings up having Anthony McFarland in space and he flourishes. That's true, but it's also true of Calvin. And that's where this was all supposed to be something that was super dynamic from either side, wherever you hid them or put them in the offense at any given moment, if you decided to go too big, meaning as a defense and too much in the box that you had either of these guys that would just say, Oh, cool. It's just a bunch of 300 pounders. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) And then they would just go to either edge. That option in fairness to Canada and fairness to the entire Steelers offense was taken away because both of these players have been hurt for big stretches. Speaking of hurt, I got – here's one from James. Hey, Mo, why isn't Washington a red zone threat? You, you really want more team uh, soap opera, okay? George Pickens is already talking about he wants the ball more, okay? You want to give it to Darnell Washington, James? Absolutely. I'm being facetious here. Uh, <laughs> but what I'm telling you is this. He'll get his opportunities when it's there when it comes to Darnell Washington. You want to know how you can do a, a flex as a fan? How? Watch this. This is from Mike Jones. Was it Master Teague, who's the other back? All that is, Mike, you have to come clean here. This is Mike just saying, I can remember the most obscure name on the running back depth chart through training camp. Did it happen to be Master Teague? It actually wasn't, because I think he was cut by then. You know what he can do? Nice job, though. Mike Jones can go to, uh, what is it, Pro Football (laughs) Reference and do the uh, Immaculate Grid every day. They ask those type of questions. Yeah, my co-host loves that. He probably does it. Mike's probably he's probably doing it right now to drop another one. Uh, I was there was a one today, man. It was name a Washington commander and also a Pittsburgh Steeler. The, and the goal of it is to get the most obscure name you never you never think of. Oh, geez, a, a commander and a Steeler. Commander and a Steeler. Who you got? Ryan Clark. Oh, I forgot about RC. But I was going for a low percentage guy, oh, John yeah, Boston. The, the, Oh, okay. Yeah, you would go for John Bostic. John Bostic. That's funny. Did Rendell L <laughs> also play for him too? Antoine did too. Yeah. Antoine it, did too. It's sure it's did. not it's not a long list. Uh Cole Holcomb. Cole Holcomb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's the Immaculate Grid. You knew all those answers, though. Well, I didn't have time to look him up. Look, my eyes never left. <laughs> <laughs> never left the pretty face over to my I side here. Get Ryan Clark. God. And Rendell L too. <laughs> Rendell L came back after them. Uh, good stuff. Brandon Clark is making his way up here this weekend. 10 year old are, are going to the Penguins game. Penguins versus Buffalo Saturday night here in the Steelers game Sunday against the Packers. Uh, Brandon, I got news for you. You've got a third stop. Just got added to your tour. Okay. You got to make yeah. your way down here to 224 Fifth Avenue. Yeah. And don't ask the question if you're going to have a good time. You're around Steelers Nations. You're going to have a good time. Okay. Oh yeah, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that that, that's a that's a that's a bad look. You don't want to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Matthew not. says I'm waiting to see Kenny hit CA3 in stride on a slant, and CA3 takes it to the house. Funny, how many times have they tried that play? Yeah, I, you know I, what I mean, I'm talking about <laughs> the one up the middle. Well, yeah. Oh <laughs> yes, he had him. <laughs> he had him. He had him. He underthrew him. I saw people getting on CA3 for that. He just underthrew him. He underthrew him. And great play by Aziz Alshire, too. The linebacker? He, 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 for a linebacker to get back there 
and swat that definitively swat that yeah. ball away was impressive. However, he never should have had a chance he never at it. Should have had a chance. <laughs> But, but yeah. this is also what I said. That doesn't mean Kenny has a weak arm. Kenny just thought that that's where Calvin was going to be at. Calvin got faster, I think. I didn't like that ball out of his hands, Mo. Not to r- respectfully disagree. I, I didn't, didn't like. like I, I didn't like the okay. out of his hands. Ah, I feel it. I feel it. Yeah, there, it's just it, it had a bad feel the moment he let it go. Uh, taking care of, of of more business here, uh, as as it relates to our memberships and so forth. Papa Ray comes in with ten gifts. And uh, I think we mentioned earlier that Hodge came in with with 10 as well. Yeah. Uh, here's how you accept a gift membership. Okay, if you want to get in on this, and while people are just passing them out, don't say they no. Are. You Big know? Time. Oh, by the way, if you're in this weekend, I should have mentioned this. It's it's a light-up night downtown Is here on, on Saturday. Yeah, so light-up <sighs> night and a Penguins game coincide on the same night. I got a problem with that, though. Yeah, it seems like it's too much. It's Jeez. too early. Boss says that uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't it's too matter. Early. It doesn't matter. Boss says here we're actually going to be open till 10 p.m. Okay, on Saturday. That's good. Okay. That, that, that's too early, DK. It's, it's not even Thanksgiving yet, man. And I know everybody don't celebrate it, but at least make it to the 20th of this month. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, it just it just worked out that way. Uh, the gingerbread houses are all up in Market Square. <laughs> And really? oh, we're ready. Yeah, we're not messing around here. Uh, Demond says, "What happened uh, to the to the tight end, Reimersma?" He says, "How do you say it?" For our move? No, Reimersma. I remember this name. I don't know. Yeah, but I don't remember it enough to. I think it was James Reimersma. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the answer is I have no idea, Demond. Dang, Demond, you 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 be great at the Macklin grid. Yeah, you you know what? If once you've been master teaked, you know. Yeah, Ohio State got so so he's probably an Ohio State fan too. I'm just saying, oh, yeah. when somebody drops a master Teague, you know what you do? You just say, "Hey, good job, you won." <laughs> okay, I wasn't gonna come up with a, I wasn't Bob gonna come Schreiner, up with Reiner. So right, Carrion Fox played for Washington and Pittsburgh. Also, sure did Foxy. He got a Super Bowl ring. Too. Yes, yeah, way too early. Says fishing for trout. Hey, you know what? Doesn't mean you're not gonna be here. We ex- right. we expect you here. We expect you here on that weekend. We expect you here on the weekend after that. Exploitation, DK. Exploitation, man. Yeah, Hanover Fist says something about Sparkle Night. No, it's it's light up night. It is a Pittsburgh tradition, and it's a downtown Pittsburgh tradition that dates back several decades. And we're proud of that. For anybody who doesn't know what that is, every single light is on. It's a sight like no other because it's a skyline, like. No other. I really side with Brian Brown here. Mm. I thought I'm not a sports. I don't get it. Am I supposed to get that? They'll you'll get it in a little bit. All <laughs> they, right, I'll, I'll, they're gonna tell you. I don't they're think gonna you 420. Here it is. Jay Earth Day. Oh, okay. Jay Reemersma is uh the name. Very well done here, Master Teague. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have uh, we have uh, all kinds of nonsense here that I'm looking at here. Yeah, light up night has always been the week before Thanksgiving. It's not don't it's not to be confused. Light up night, by the way, is not to be confused with uh, uh, you know Black Friday and whatever else. Yeah. It's not that light up night is ours. I did. I thought it was that. I'll yeah. be honest with you. Now it does represent the start of the shopping season downtown and whatever else here, but that's just so that you know businesses here can make money. Yeah, uh, I see. Luke, I <laughs> go ahead. Luke says, "Hey, Moan, do you think Kenny and Jordan Love are in the same tier at quarterback? High expectations from both, but they aren't living up to it. And now, of course, they're going to go head to head. Very much so. Fair, very fair. Uh, only difference is, is Jordan Love had about what three to four years to actually learn a little bit. Oh, and, he should have learned a lot. In yeah, that he time. learned a lot, and That's a I almost long think time. He st- for him to be in the same boat as Kenny as a second year guy. I don't know what it says about him, but of course, you get better by playing. Uh, I think a lot of Jordan Love. I do. I think he got done dirty, but it is what it is, and you need to take advantage of the opportunities right now, though. But yeah, same tier, definitely done, a lot done, of potential. Done dirty by being buried behind Rogers. You mean? Y- yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but Josh Dobbs told us what? Don't feel sorry about your circumstances. Josh Dobbs. 
everybody's shining light is a third string quarterback from now until the end of time. You know, <laughs> some, somewhere between him and wasn't Nick Foles at some point a third stringer? Yeah, he was. And, and he uh, ends Fitzpatrick. Up- I had somebody say that. Like, is he going to be this era's Fitzpatrick? And it's looking like it. Fitz magic. Fitz magic, man. Oh, Bible NFC player of the week. Off the road. Don't know the playbook. I didn't know that. That should should have gotten him that. That shouldn't be a disqualifier. I know. Absolutely. (laughs) Josh Dobbs, NFC player of the week, man. Huge. Oh, wow. No, I actually hadn't known that. Guys, we're going to take one more today. Let's see if uh, – here, this one's from Irv. Comes in and says, hey, Moan, what was your favorite thing to do after a good home game win? What did you do after you left Akershire Stadium and that player's lot off to the side? Man, honestly, it's going to sound so millennial, right? Check the phone. The vibes are always going to be good. Whether that be from family members, uh, send my wife and kids after the game. They go on the field and run and play and have a good time. We usually have people in town. And then it's, man, finding a, a nice chill spot to go have dinner and realize I can walk in here with my head up high. You know what, Irv? Everything he just told you was a lie. <laughs> Why? Ramon Foster's favorite thing to do after a good home game win was to sit at his stall and look over at the far door and wait for me to come through. <laughs> Everything else came after that. That's fair. Because That's where fair. would I always go first? A straight beeline to that corner stall over beeline there. Beeline to that corner. If it wasn't Moan, it was Dave, it was Marquise, it was one of my guys on the offensive line. Some things never change, as the current offensive lineman can tell you. Uh it's not because I liked you. It's because I knew where all the good info was. Yeah, <laughs> as I would was, tell you, <laughs> what's crazy is Mark Keys was the uh, the hanger on interviewer. He would get invited into everybody's interview, but he wouldn't really sit down because he was quick about it in the locker room more times than not, man. But as you could tell, we man that, that group we had was dope. I'll be real with you, it was. That's good, good stuff. All right, guys, we're calling it a day here, and uh, we will be back. Uh, quite possibly right after right after this, right? Yeah, let's let's do that, DK. Absolutely. Okay. If you haven't done so yet, go ahead and tap the like button or smash it, as some people like to say, uh, to become a member of this program. And remember, we're, we've just crossed 1,500. Go to dkps.net slash join. Um, and if you've gotten a gift, or you see some of these gifts that have accumulated here, and you're wondering, how do I get one of those? <laughs> right within the live chat, just select Allow Gifts. Simple, yeah. as, simple as that. I had one that I was setting aside here. I got a good one. That Did you? Came in too. Tomorrow's yeah. the 400th episode. Dang. Yeah, this we just hit 300. I know it's like this stuff goes fast, huh? This is a good one, man. I don't know if I've ever in my life seen or been asked this question. DK, you ready? And we uh-huh. can just bow out after this one. All right. Hey, Mo, what can you say to Tomlin to lose oh, your job? How did this not come up before this? I don't know. Because Chuk Sikorafor has acknowledged, and now as of yesterday, Tomlin has acknowledged that something that Chooks said – contributed significantly and that's the term that was used to his benching i know what it was and i can tell you after i don't want to disclose like that's team business uh but i'll tell you this the times i've seen people lose their jobs it's times i saw their hand not be put in the pile if you're not doing anything to help us win whether that be a backup being on the scout team being uh, a good teammate you're gonna lose your job uh i told you the situation where a guy decided you know he wanted to quit camp and a great talent, we want to quit camp to go do something else. And we beg Coach T, Coach T, man, we, he, he ain't in his right mind. We're we, we going to get him back. He, he, No, I'm telling y'all, no, don't save him. He doesn't want to do this. We don't need him doing this and holding y'all back. So what can get you fired, Alex, is you not being a football guy. That's why he's willing to tolerate George. That's why he was willing to tolerate A.B., it, Ben, me. Pounce. Think about it. If you're willing to help that man win, 
you got a shot. And as much as y'all gonna say, well, team discipline, screw that, DK. What is the what is his job at the end of the day? Oh, it's just a win, and he wants you to fight for that win. Fight for that win. So whatever Chooks had said, it's clear his teammates heard it, and Coach T got a whiff of it. So because of that, you lose your spot. He wants everybody's hand in the pile. Whether it was an emotional moment or what, I matter. heard it. Doesn't I matter. Heard it, and you heard it in the, in the wrong place. I heard it in the wrong place. Which is something else that this head coach values a lot is what's your conduct and how you carry yourself in stadiums. Has he been? Has Coach T ever been in a position where a player probably cussed at him or cussed him out? Every coach has. I don't know who would be that smart to do that, but everybody has a little something that you deal with to get dubs. Guys, we will be back with another show tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching, for listening. However it is that you happen to consume this particular product, we will be back and start really setting you up for Steelers versus Packers Sunday, 102 p.m. at Akersher Stadium. Bye-bye. See you. <laughs>